Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. This is um, an impromptu quick video, but I want to give all the honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh by Hashem Rakakadash. Double honors to the elders at Great Millstone, taught me the truth. Sing honors to the elect, peace and blessings to the one third. Elon Musk probably wise to for me to limit travel after arrest of Telegram CEO Pavel Durov. Now, what's very interesting about this? It goes to uh, the simple fact of communication. Let it sink in. Let it sink in, y'all. Elon Musk says it's probably wise for him to limit his travels to areas where free speech is constitutionally protected. The ex-owner's comments come after Telegram CEO Pavel Dura was arrested in France in connection to a, quote, lack of moderation, unquote, on his messaging app. So, this is the Elon Musk quote. Quote, probably wise f to for me to limit movements to countries where free speech is constitutionally protected. Unquote. Musk said in response to an ex-user who suggested that he consider the implications. And think about this. <clears throat> this is where he posted. Elon Musk posted on his account. Dangerous times. In wokeness. In the UK, mass arrest citizens for memes. In France, arrest founder of Telegram. This happened recently. Ireland tries to ban mean memes. Brazil forces X to flee the country. Australia tries to censor X posts. EU tries to blackmail Elon Musk. DOG jails someone for a meme. Maduro blocks all. I understand what's happening, people. Your First Amendment's been taken away. You must understand one thing. Word of mouth is the quickest way to get news around, right? But we live in an information age right now where information is at the palm of your hand. Let me show you an example. All right, so look at this quote. The internet should have never existed. It's a threat to national security. J. Rockefeller. Translated, it's screwing up the monopoly my family has had on America for the last 140 years. And people are finding out what scumbags we are. Now, that's a meme, right? This is what they want to ban. Because people are gathering quick information like this without having to go in-depth and detail into like references or getting you know information. Like This is stuff that... The elders have known for years things that I haven't come across because of my elders and also done my own research. But this is the information they don't want to get out. I understand your First Amendment and want to take that away from you. But let's go into the scriptures about how the tongue can't be ruled. But this also goes into the family of the world, word, okay? <clears throat> this is James 3 and 4. I'm reading the King James Version side. You can read the American Standard Version, if I'm not mistaken. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. So it's saying the ship is such a major vessel, but it's a very small helm that can move the entire vessel, right? Listen, even so the tongue is a little member. And boast of great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Word of mouth catches like what? Wildfire. So they're trying to cut the communication down. Cause they don't want the they don't want news to spread if something pops off. How do you know there's a protest in France without the without the social media, without the internet? Right? And also, how are we gathering the elect in the four winds of the earth? We don't have to go to the four winds of the earth like IUIC is trying to do. The Lord said he would gather us by his spirit, Isaiah 34 and 16. That's how powerful the tongue is. The word was in the beginning. It's all about the word. I was like, let me forget. Me. So, um, <clears throat> James chapter 3 Verse 6, and the tongue is a fire, a word of iniquity. Ooh, 
a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body. That's why they say it's not what goes in the man's mouth that defileth him, but it what goes out. It wasn't talking about literally consuming the food. It's talking about having food for thought. Yes, it's good to know both good and let me let me take it back. Let me say it in this term. Let me not say it like that. I don't want to think about Genesis. It's good to know both street smarts and book smarts, they say in the world, right? It's good to know both. But the, but the fact of the matter is, the same tongue, it can be a double-edged sword. Right? So anyhow, so um, for every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed to have been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. But the truth of the matter is, the word word has power. I, I said this before, and this is not to sound superstitious, but understand what I'm saying when I say this. When you're writing, you have to write out what? Words, right? And when you speak, you speak in what? Words. But not, but what's another way of saying that you're writing words? You're spelling. So when you also speak those words, you speak in words that you spell. So I'm not saying it's superstitious that you're casting spell, but isn't there power in the name of Yahweh? It has only begotten son Yahweh Shai. So it does matter how you spell those names and how you pronounce them. That's, a, that's where I get when I think about the tongue and the power of the tongue. Because it speaks about Paul speaking in tongues, meaning he spoke in different languages. If someone's name is Joseph, but I call him Yusuf, they're not going to respond because they don't speak Arabic, right? More than likely. Or if I was to call them Yawasab. They don't speak Paleo Hebrew, so that wouldn't make sense. But if I call them Joseph, they understand that vibration, which is a very low vibration. Talking about English, four main languages Hebrew, Greek, Latin, and English. Understand the power of understanding the only begotten Son's name, and his only, and his only God in the Father's name. So, like it, the Heavenly Father's name, I'm getting excited. But the, the fact of the matter is, there's, there's power in words. Hebrews 4 and 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Let me read, let me read the other side. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing even to the dividing soul and spirit of both joints and marrow, and quit to discern the thoughts and the intents of the heart. In other words, if it if it, if it ain't does say the Lord, I ignore it. And when you do speak about the word, what happened? People get it stirs up the spirits, man. That's why they stone Stephen. All he did was spoke the truth. The reason why I'm breaking out these precepts because it goes back to the article. Like Musk said, dangerous times, and we are living in dangerous times bear with me for a moment <clears throat> Ephesians 5 and 15 see then that ye walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil wherefore be ye not unwise but understanding what the will of the Lord is so remember the family, I don't, I don't have to get the precept out. It's in Amos, Amos chapter 8, verse 11, if you want to read it. But the famine of the word is coming soon. I mean, they're locking up the CEO. They're locking up CEOs because of communication, moderation on the app. These are the times, y'all. Signs of the times. But with that being said, pray you was at a fine fed. Stay in the spirit. Don't fear it. Just endure it. Ask for forgiveness. Pray without ceasing. Stay humble. Remain diligent. Kwa Masha'Allah. Muffle the ball. Shabbat wall.